Can you beat Plants vs. Zombies with only insta-kills? I can't use pea shooters, star fruits, cactuses, or anything of the sort, and I'm limited to squashes, potatoes, and cherry bombs. I also allowed sunflowers to meet the ridiculous cost of these plants, and walnuts to stall to let their ridiculously long timers refill. But no plants can damage the zombies if they don't instantly kill them. And with the rules all set, let's jump into it. But we don't unlock an insta-kill until level 3, and while I did try my best, the first two levels 100% require you to place pea shooters to beat them. It's unfortunate, but what can you do? So I'm going to modify the challenge. Can you beat levels 1-3 through 5-10 with only insta-kills? Let's actually start the challenge now. Level 3 only has 3 lanes, which seemingly fit the cherry bomb perfectly as he can cover all 3 lanes. But as I quickly came to realize, the long respawn timer would be the hardest part of this challenge by far. The only thing I could do was plant sunflowers and wait for more cherry bombs. I did use a little bit of strategy by letting the sunflowers stall zombies and group them up for a multi-kill. Although on this attempt, I misjudged the spacing and lost a mower to this zombie. Thankfully there was only one big wave so I set a cherry bomb in this lane and let the other mowers take out the rest of the zombies. Because of our close win, we unlock the walnut, whose utility is perfectly shown in the next level. I still only have the cherry bomb to do damage, so I would stall zombies as much as I could with walnuts to try and get the maximum value out of my cherry bombs. Even though I had two more lands to deal with, I only lost two mowers and finished the level unlocking the shovel. Not extremely important, but useful nonetheless. Level 5 is the first of the special levels, and it thankfully doesn't pose much of a threat. I'm going bowling and one walnut insta-kills a regular zombie. I do need the explosive ones for the coneheads, but that's alright. There's plenty to go around. My reward for beating this level was the potato mine, and because of its low cost and versatility, I brought it into every level after this point. My strategy remained basically the same over the next few levels. I'd start out with sunflowers and then use potato mines to take out the first couple of zombies. I would then use more potato mines and walnuts to stall while they charged up. And if there was a close call or a big clump of zombies, I would cherry bomb my problems away. I would focus the zombies and try my hardest to keep all the mowers alive so that in the final wave I could dig up all my plants and let the mowers go to town on the zombies. But level 10 is a little bit special. It's a conveyor belt level that intends for you to use the many plants that they give you. But all I used were the explosives. I placed the walnuts in the best way possible so that I could group up zombies and chain as many together as I could to fully use the cherry bomb. With this strategy, I was able to make it through the entire level without even losing a mower. You might be wondering though how I get rid of the useless plants. Normally they would clog up the conveyor belt and make it impossible for me to get any more useful plants. But I instead just placed them in a row without zombies so they couldn't help at all and then shovel them up a second later. It was pretty annoying to have to do it every two seconds, but I beat the level, so that's all that matters, and now we can move on to the nighttime. Make sure to subscribe if you liked the video, and want to see more like it every Monday. Thank you. The first level was already a bit of a nightmare, as now sun production is the main thing holding me back. I quickly got overrun, and didn't have the sun production to fight off zombies, so I lost three mowers. In the final wave, I used walnuts and sunflowers to stall the zombies as much as I could, and just barely pulled out a dub. Thankfully, I unlocked the sun shroom, which solved my issue. It gives less sun production, but I can plant more of them. The next level was still really hard, and it took a couple of tries. On my first go, I was constantly losing mowers, and eventually just couldn't hold them back. But on my next attempt, I got a bit better RNG to line up my cherry bombs, and also didn't let my mowers go like my life depended on it. This let me keep my mowers until the final wave where I sold all my plants and let them rip. I also noticed how weird this challenge is. You unlock the fume shroom, who's designed to take care of the screen door zombie. And while I would have to find some workaround to this, every zombie is the same. Besides gargantuans, I treat pretty much every zombie the same as they all die in one shot. The only hard thing is how many zombies there are. I bought a 7 seed saw from Dave, which was a little pointless now as I only have 5 usable plants, but it came in very important later. In levels 3 and 4, I discovered my ultimate strategy. I started out with sun shrooms to get the sun production rolling, but then after about 8 of them, I would switch to sunflowers as they immediately give full sun production, and with 8 sun shrooms, I can start affording them. This let me never struggle to have enough sun to buy things, and looked a little weird, but I can take that. Having these two plants served a dual purpose. 
Sure, they summon sun, but using conjunction, they can almost infinitely stall zombies. They almost perfectly match each other's reload times, so I can use them both to almost match a walnut. Level 5 was a weird power-up level, and I pretty much followed the same strategy as before for levels 6 and 7. But the main highlight was unlocking the Doom Shroom after level 8. This guy is essentially an upgraded cherry bomb, and instead of blowing up a 3x3 radius, I'm pretty sure he blows up a 5x5 five five radius, taking out almost every zombie on screen. He does leave an unplantable crater, but I will gladly take that trade off. I also unlocked the Ice Room. I realized after a bit that he doesn't insta-kill, so maybe I shouldn't use him. But then I also realized that he doesn't do any damage, so maybe I can use him? I was confused, and since I didn't even really have the seed slots to bring him, I decided to leave him at home for the rest of the challenge. Solely relying on the Doom Shroom, I cruised through level 9 and also walloped all the zombies in level 10. The property value of this house might have gone down by a solid $20,000 because it looks like the aftermath of World War 1, but I guess if you have hordes of zombies for your neighbors then you probably have bigger problems. Moving on to the backyard, I lost every single sun shroom and now only have my 4 original plants to take on the zombies, plus a $25 fee to get on the water. I nearly lost the first level because of how unprepared I was, but thankfully I pulled through and unlocked my lord and savior, the squash. He costs 50 sun, but price isn't the selling point. He reloads insanely fast and is instantly ready unlike the potato mine. He's useful in a pinch and made the next couple of levels much easier. It especially helped on the water. Since I can't plant potato mines on lily pads, my only option was to use cherry bombs on every single water zombie. Then after level 3, I unlocked the tangleweed, which was the icing on the cake. I now have the potato mine of the water that doesn't need to charge up at all but it does have a very long reload timer, so there's that. Because of its long timer and the fact that there's only two lanes of water, I would build up lines of tangleweeds as soon as I could in preparation. Since the normal grasslands were split up so nicely, it also made cherry bombs more effective and everything was a bit simpler since the zombies were squeezed into four lanes instead of five. Level five is another conveyor belt where we have to fight a bunch of toddlers. Thankfully, there's again enough explosives to go around and I easily beat the level. My reward though was the chili pepper. He's a lot less useful than the cherry, but he's another plant that I can use. I also bought 8 slots from Dave, so I'm sending him right in. With this many insta kills and the mowers to back me up, I didn't lose a single time between levels 6, 7, 8, and 9. But with a ridiculous amount of sun I was producing, I found out that there's a cap on sun production at 9,990. Level 10 is a sad point, because the only insta-kills it gives are chili peppers and squashes, which just aren't enough for its three brutal waves, so I had to use the pea shooters. But I don't even consider this to be a real level, as I can't choose my plants, so let's try the actual challenge in World 4. Since I have my shrooms back in action, I have an overwhelming amount of options again. After unlocking the lantern after level 1, I even decided to get rid of the sunflower, as although my sun production is slowed with the sun shroom, I need the space for every insta-kill plant I can get. The fog makes the early game an absolute pain, as I don't know where each zombie is coming from. I then plant a potato mine late and have to pray there's enough time for it to sprout up before the zombie eats him. After I manage to get a lantern or two up, we're usually in the clear, but then I have to defend the lanterns so they don't get eaten. It's a whole pain. I got really scared when this message popped up, informing me that I had no way to take out balloon zombies. I figured that a good old cherry bomb would do the trick, and it did. It disintegrated this man like it's nobody's business, so I guess they just put this message up so you use the cactus. The flying zombies do move fast and can't be slowed down, so I did end up losing a couple of mowers to them, but I have plenty to go around. Level 5 took a lot of planning, because although the pots are randomized, they are the same amount of each plant every time. In the first stage, there are exactly enough squashes to kill every zombie. So I smash pots like a madman and crush the zombies. In the next stage, there's too many zombies, so I had to sacrifice two mowers to win. In the final wave, I remember the LSD mushroom is technically an insta-kill, and used that to save these two lanes while the mowers took out the rest of them. It was a hard-fought battle, but a good one. Through the next levels, almost nothing changed. They introduced the pogo zombie and threw some balloon zombies at me, but there wasn't even a three-flag stage. Level 10 is unfortunately similar to the last world, except even worse somehow. There are literally no insta-kill plants, so we can quickly move on to world 5 where actual stuff happens. World 5 is on the roof, which thankfully doesn't change too much for us. We again don't have mushrooms, but with sun coming from the sky again, it's a worthy trade-off. 
The roof tilt doesn't change our strategy at all, because every plant we're allowed to use functions the same. But there are some very annoying new zombies that we'll have to face, and hordes of zombies bigger than I've faced in this challenge. So, it's gonna be rough. When I went back to review the footage while writing this script, I found out that the file was corrupted and I lost a whole hour and a half of footage. So, I'm frantically replaying each level, trying to recreate it as best I can. But, cut me a little slack if something seems off. I tried to make sure I didn't bring any plants in that shouldn't be there, but in the first level I do have roof cleaners which I technically shouldn't have. Anyway, since these guys shouldn't be here, I had a bit of a stressful time in the final wave as if I let one zombie leak then I die. But with two walnuts I was AO good and moved on to level 2 with pots and roof cleaners finally being unlocked. But since I'm a PVZ expert, I absolutely blew through levels 2 and 3 so let's skip to an interesting one. I remember that in the original playthrough, I accidentally misclicked on the jalapeno and instead brought in a useless lily pad. It was a super hard fought battle and I don't want it to be for nothing, so I'm replaying the level in the exact same way. Level 4 was already a super hard level. It has 3 flags and it also has the pogo jumper and home depot employee zombies. The latter guy is annoying as he moves really fast and annihilates walnuts in his path, but the pogo zombie is the true menace. He moves incredibly fast, and if I don't have a Talna or Cherry Bomb on command, then I lose a mower or my brain. I try my best to build lines of Talnuts in preparation, but he still managed to sneak through a couple of times. By the third wave, I only had two mowers left, so I put all my cards on the table and just barely managed to kill these two zombies with a mine at the end of the line. Level 5 is a bit of an interesting one. There aren't enough cherries for all the zombies, but there are chompers, who do take out any zombie in one chomp. I didn't really think about this as it doesn't feel right and they're kind of reusable, but for this conveyor belt level, I'll let it slide. And don't worry, level 10 is not going to be fake. I'm doing it with only insta kills, legit. Level 6 and 7 were carried by the nuts. Having this line of solid defense let me recharge my mines and squashes to deal with all the zombies. I did have to deal with the catapult zombies, which was really annoying, but since he targets the back of the line and sunflowers are all but useless, since I have 2 billion sun at all time, he didn't deal much damage to my defense. Levels 8 and 9 though are the real deal. Both feature gargantuan so you don't get insta-killed by a bomb. In level 8, I was a little stupid with the first big guy. I started by using the chili, but forgot about the little guy, so I had to use a squash for him and another cherry bomb to finish off the gargantuan. The next time I made sure to use the cherry bomb first, and then use the chili to cut out the squash in between. I expected level 9 to be so much harder, but I don't know if I got super lucky or something, as I only had one gargantuan in the final wave, which I quickly disposed of. I didn't even lose a mower over 3 waves of gameplay, which is crazy. But confusion aside, let's face Dr. Edgar Zomboss and his massive robot. To start the fight, I let the zombies take out 4 mowers, and because of how PVZ AI works, Dr. Zombas now only spawns zombies in that lane. It can look a little overwhelming, but with a chili pepper always in my back pocket, I was good at a moment's notice. They give you a ton of chili peppers to deal large chunks of damage to the boss, so I made quick work of him and beat the final level with only insta kills. It was a little scuffed with the first two levels and the annoying conveyor belt levels, but it was still a fun challenge. Subscribe if you enjoyed, thank you for watching, and have a great day.